let's discuss the kidney. So here's my model of the kidney. This structure up here is representing the adrenal glands, which remember are responsible for secreting the hormone adrenaline, which causes our fight or flight response in a stressful situation. Responses of our body include an increased heart rate and increased breathing rate that will help deliver oxygen to respiring cells, releasing more energy so we can contract our muscles, whether that's to fight or whether it's to run away from our adversary. We'll also see our pupils dilate, the hair stand up on end, and our blood is diverted away from our digestive system to our muscles, and that accounts for the butterfly feeling you feel in your stomach in these sorts of situations. But what about the kidney itself? Well, the outermost layer of the kidney is known as the cortex. The blood vessel which supplies oxygenated blood to the kidney is the renal artery. The one which removes deoxygenated blood is the renal vein. Now, the kidney has two main roles. The first role is osmoregulation, that means control of blood water levels. The second role is in excretion. To show you the middle portion of the kidney, you can see here your medulla, that contains lots of nephrons. Here's your cortex, which leads to your ureter. The ureter drains urine to the bladder. So to describe to you the osmoregulatory function of the kidney. Now, osmoregulation refers to the control of the blood water levels of our body. So what happens in the situation where we haven't had a lot to drink, we need to conserve our blood water levels. So the first thing is that osmoreceptors present in the hypothalamus detect low levels of water in the blood. They send a signal to the pituitary gland located in the brain to secrete large amounts of the hormone ADH, antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone travels to our kidney, specifically the collecting duct of the nephrons, and here it makes the walls of the collecting duct more permeable to water, meaning that more water is reabsorbed into the blood, so there's less water available to make urine, so less water flows down our ureter to our bladder. Resulting urine is, is high in concentration, it's quite smelly, it's yellow in colour, and that will help conserve our blood water levels. The opposite is true if we've had lots of water to drink, our hypothalamus detects high water levels, less ADH is secreted by the pituitary gland, the walls of the collecting duct are less permeable to water, less water is reabsorbed back into the blood, so there's an awful lot of water available to produce urine. So that's the osmoregulatory role of the kidney, but what about the excretory role? So I keep mentioning nephrons because this is a large model of the kidney. You can't really see the nephrons here, they're microscopic, there's several million of them. Just to quickly describe to you the excretory role of the kidney, the substance we're trying to excrete is urea. This is a product produced by the breakdown of excess proteins to produce amino acids, ammonia which is toxic, then converted to the urea which we excrete in a process known as deamination. So our first step in the excretion of urea is ultrafiltration. This occurs at the Bowman's capsule. Here small molecules are forced out of the blood in the glomerulus, this is a small blood vessel, into the nephron. Small molecules include urea, water, glucose and ions. This occurs under high pressure and what you do find is that proteins don't usually enter the nephron and that's because they're too large to pass through the basement membrane of the Bowman's capsule. So as we know, the small molecules have entered the nephron. The next step is known as selective reabsorption. This is when the useful molecules are removed out of the nephron and taken back into the blood and it occurs by a process of active transport, which means the movement of particles from an area of low concentration to high concentration against the concentration gradient, therefore requiring an input of energy. So what sort of substances do we want to reabsorb back to transport? Well, glucose as well as ions. Urea being a waste material is allowed to continue along the nephron and water I've already mentioned. It's brought back into the blood through the action of ADH on the collecting duct. And by doing this, the urea passes along the nephron, along the ureter, into the bladder where it can be excreted. And that therefore explains why the kidney can be described as an excretory organ.